hello, my name is uh, Menno Kai. I'm a certified Ableton trainer of the Netherlands and we're here at Dance Fair showing you the push and some really cool Max for Life devices, for example, the LFO. Usually I get a lot of questions about uh, push and how to use that with uh, VST plugins. It would be very, very cool if you can just add a VST plugin and that you get all your parameters on the push with the name of all the knobs. And fortunately, that's possible. So what did I do here? I added the Diva, really like that synth. And the basic way in Ableton to add knobs from this GUI is to press configure. Let's get the cut cutoff frequency and the peak or resonance. And let's add the, okay, let's go to device because you see once I click on it, it directly gets into my screen. Okay. So let's keep it like that. It's possible to have also uh, more banks of eight controls in here. So it's able, you're able to control your complete synth with that. Once you did that, is, uh, you can make it into a uh, group. And you are able to store the group in your user library. That's great because uh, you don't want to add all the parameters uh, every time you use a synth. Okay, I added a small reverb. And uh, let's make something with that. It's a bass line. So I press play. And here uh, we all saw all the movies of Push, so I can play. Which is great, but for bass lines it's also great to press again on the note knob. And then I get the step sequencer. Let's make it very short, just half a bar. Okay, and we are all familiar with, um, with the automation maybe. So I have automation and the session record knob. And let's uh, press that and I will turn the knobs and then uh, we will automate it directly into the clip. As you can see, it's a rather small uh, loop. So I can only uh, automate just half a bar. So I press double and again double. So what I did now, I uh, made the loop two bars long uh, and I want to delete my automation. People don't know always that it's a touch sensitive, so I press the delete knob, it's my fingers on it and I touch it and it's gone. And I can press duplicate. Rem remove the parameters and I can start again. I don't even have to remove the parameters. I mean, that could be cool for, uh, for a starter. Duplicate it. Okay, I go to session mode. These are the three clips. And this is the crazy one with the release up. So you can see how easy it is to uh, automate uh, knobs from a VST plugin. Let's go a bit farther. We have also Max for Life in the suite version. And we have the LFO, it's a universal LFO. You can add it to every knob you want. Let's, I will show you how. Um, I will take again the usual suspect of the frequency. Um, we go to Max for Life, it's an audio effect. I love to use the search function. Let's add this effect, and um, this is an LFO. Let's zoom into that, and I can map that. And I click map, and I have to show Ableton where to map. So you see how that frequency goes crazy, which, which is already great in itself. And of course I can add this. I can also change it on the push. So let's say I want to have the depth a bit lower and the offset a bit lower. So it's modulating a bit in the lower end. Here we have the rate, of 
course I can sync it, but that, uh, I like it better to add an extra LFO. This is classical uh, synth synthesis and modulation, so I map that one to the rate. Now the rate goes crazy as well. It looks uh, very beautiful uh, on the screen, but it will not sound that great. So the second one should be very slow. So, or maybe we sync that, why not? Put that one two bars. And uh, make, maybe make the depth a bit slower and the uh, offset. Okay. And it will work even better if I have my release a bit up. So uh, in this way you can make a, a very beautiful bass lines with uh, heavy modulation. I think it would be great for dubstep and uh, these kind of uh, genres. So how do, you, how do you scroll through the different uh, devices? Can you do that from push? You want me to add an LFO from push? Yeah. Here we have uh, the Max for Life. So I press add an effect and I can choose between the basic effects of Ableton and here I have Max for Life and maybe it's better to uh, go to my track over my devices and I will remove that LFO huh? because else I have two LFOs what might be a bit too much this is also if you use it for a while you understand that delete and pressing re reverb will delete the reverb so you don't need the screen for that as well and all the Max for Live and the Ableton devices are already mapped to the push, right? Yes, they are. Uh, even, like here, let's say I have this sound over here. Let's great sound, but it would be greater if we, uh, we uh, put an extra note an octave higher and maybe on the 7th. We have this MIDI effects as well in Ableton. Um, you might think that if you add, press add effect, you only can add audio effects. But if I keep, keep the knob pressed, um, no, it works like that. Shift and add effect. Now I can add a media effect as well. So I choose chord and I go to devices. And this says how many semitones I want to have it up. So now I have an octave. Maybe one lower. Now I get a very big chord. So it's audio effects, Max for Life audio effects, media effects. You can add everything and it's mapped uh, directly. If you have an external VST plugin, you have to map it once, store it as an instrument rack, and uh, once you load it again, you have all your parameters mapped. It's, it's super. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome.